And Colorado lawmakers are proposing one of the largest budget cuts to K-12 education across the state in an effort to balance the 2020-2021 budget. Meanwhile, Colorado school districts will receive over $500 million in funding to be used by December. Carry X5 Shelby Bracho looked into the current situation at School District 51, and she's live with more. Thank you, Katrin. Nobody knows exactly how much money is going to be removed from District 51's budget because of these cuts, but I can tell you that it will be significant. Now, thankfully, the CARES Act is scheduled to give more funding to School District 51, which should help with their budget, but school officials tell me right now they're weighing their options. Nobody's happy about a reduction ever, but we also understand that everybody has to is going to share in um, the impact on our community. D51 Superintendent Diana Serco says the budget cuts are not a surprise. We already began kind of scaling back our efforts in preparation, um, but we'll continue to look to say, you know, what are those pieces that are mission critical that must be filled. Helping to balance the budget, the CARES Act is scheduled to provide a second wave of funding. We should have more information in the near future so that we can make plans appropriately and make sure that we're following all legal guidelines. Diana Serco says School District 51 estimates it will receive about $11 million through the CARES Act. Now, this is the second round of funding. D51 was earmarked for $3 million during the first round. Now, the first CARES Act is a little bit more flexible in how we can utilize that. But that $11 million will only be available through December, meaning the district needs to be strategic. We need to be wise in how we look at this. We understand that this was not something that anybody anticipated or even expected. Jennifer McCurdy and her daughter Parker say this hasn't been easy. My grades did tank a lot. I'm not an at-home learner. I'm definitely more of a hands-on person, and I know a lot of people are like that. A lot of guidance learning was certainly unable to be done. It was, here's your assignments, and here's maybe a check-in here or there. And I feel like it was because the teachers didn't know what to expect or even anticipate. So I certainly don't blame the teachers. As for the school district, let's take this COVID experience and really make sure that we're prepared for something else. D51's main focus right now. But at this point, you know, we're just saying, okay, what, what could that look like? Weighing the options. Our current hope and goal is to have students in face-to-face -face instruction at least 50% of the time. We may have some different varieties of learning taking place and more and a lot of blended learning opportunities taking place. A lot of kids, school is their only hope. They come home from broken homes and this is really big for them. And if it wasn't for school, some of them wouldn't be here. An issue Diana says. There are many students who are, you know, suffering the results of this and families who have felt, um, you know, it's been a really, really tough time for them. Is at the forefront of concern. We'll hope for the best and plan for the worst, just to make sure that we are prepared and ready so that we do not compromise the quality of our students' education. Now, Diana tells me that the school district is very uh, keen on making sure that they are careful with how they use these funds. And in particular, they want to focus on the academic needs of students as well as the mental and physical health of them as well. First on the Western Slope and live from Grand Junction High School, Shelby Bracho, KREX 5 News. Back to you, Katrin.